It's time once again to slip into your camo, grab your bow, and join us out in the field for another episode of the Up North Journal, presented by PSE Archery. The Up North Journal crew is knocked and ready to rock for another exciting adventure. So let's step outside and hit the trail. This episode is brought to you by PSE Archery. Black Eagle Arrows. Cabela's. Antler Action. Spot Shooter Archery. Tom's Custom Turkey Calls. Family Traditions Tree Stands. And Badass Slingshots. Welcome back to another episode of the Up North Journal, everybody. I'm host Mike Adams, and I am back in the cabin, you little door breaker, you. Hey, I got to do what I got to do to keep the show going. You you keep breaking into the dang cabin. Well, you, you keep coming home late on Sunday nights, you know what, and I even got backup tonight. Yeah, yeah, well... We got more than one backup. Yeah, you know, I got a whole bunch of backups, so you can't even do yeah. anything about it. Well, I'm here tonight. Well, yes, you are. <laughs> Just fresh back from camp. You're back fresh I'm from camp. Back. We're both, we both had the week off. Uh, Randy's sitting in studio, but he's off mic. He's over there playing on the phone, and Mara is all the way from Ohio on phone. Hey, Mara, what's going on? Hey, guys. How's it going? Good. Good, Good. killer. Killer. <laughs> killer Mara. I know, right? Hey. <laughs> You know, officially killer that's right i think uh we, i think we just start the show off talking about uh, a big ohio buck getting i would put say down. that well we obviously that's the only thing we can talk about because uh, you didn't get nothing and i didn't get nothing no and, but i had a good time oh i didn't say we didn't have a good time i had a great time man. we don't have uh, anything got, on the wall or no at the taxidermy no but i got some stories to tell but, oh yeah but i want to hear about uh about this uh big buckeye buck that's so, right so, Mara, um, you know, take us through what happened to you this week. We've seen the pictures. Well, I want to hear the story. Yeah. Um, I was able to take my first buck this week, technically, um, on Thursday. Um, I, shot a, I shot a six-point buck like two years ago, but long story short, uh, somebody found him before I did and, and took his head and his back straps. Um, nice <laughs> so neighbor, huh? technically my first. Yeah, this was technically my first buck, um, my first tag deer, my first, you know. So it was seriously an experience that I've been waiting. I was literally waiting for this for years and years and years, ever since I started hunting back when I was in, like, middle school. Um, so, yeah, Cody and I, we were actually, we weren't in my spot out in Licking County. We were in Cody's spot in Knox County, and um, we kind of got out to the stand late. It was it was kind of crazy. We didn't really get to the woods till like five fifteen, five thirty, And by the time we walked all the way back to our stand, it was like going on six o'clock. It was like five forty or so. And, and Cody climbed up into his stand and we have a double setup, two hang ons in the same tree. And I was still messing around on the ground, getting organized and stuff. And Cody was up there getting his stuff organized and, all of a sudden, I heard Cody tapping on the tree, and I look up, and he's mouthing, there's a buck in the thicket, and because he, he put his his hands up like antlers, and my heart started racing, <laughs> and all of a sudden, I started listening, and I could hear him, I could hear a buck grunting um, in a thicket in front of my stand, like, maybe 60 yards away, and I was like, oh, crap, because I was still on the ground. I had nothing ready, um, so I quickly, but swiftly quietly climbed up the the la 20 foot ladder stick we had and you know it's like creaking and clanking the whole time i'm cr trying to crawl up this thing and i get in my stand i snap on my safety harness and i literally sit down and i grab my release and i'm putting my release on as i'm putting my release on i had just hung my bag down i look up and there's a buck that steps out of the thicket at like 50 yards and is heading straight towards us. Okay. Cody still has the camera in the bag. I start freaking out. I'm like, there's a buck, there's a buck, there's a buck. But like, you know, Cody and I are like talking and we're clanking. We're making noise. This buck never heard us. He never saw us. Nothing. So I literally just got my release buckle, look up and see antlers heading straight towards me. And my heart, literally, I'm pretty sure it stopped. Um, it was like time stopped for a minute, and I grabbed my bow. My quiver was still zipped up into my backpack. I grab an arrow as quickly as I can out of my quiver. I throw it on my bow to knock it. <laughs> it literally, my arrow literally clanked on my riser as I was knocking my arrow. The buck still was oblivious, and it's not even windy. It's not nothing. So how he didn't hear us or see us 
is or even smell us is beyond me and I didn't have I mean the whole time this is everything is happening and I'm trying to get my stuff ready this buck is walking straight towards us I didn't have my arrow knocked until this deer was at 30 yards and he, ne- and, and, and he never heard you or saw you from all this commotion. He, he never heard me, saw me, nothing, nothing. And it was it was nuts. And I first was, I almost drew back when he was at 30 yards, but he never turned broadside. He was just facing me. And I didn't, you know, with a bow, I didn't want to shoot him in the chest. And I thought he was going to either turn left or right and just give me a broadside, broadside shot at like 25 yards, but he didn't. He just took a step towards us and literally was going to walk right underneath our stand. So I didn't even have time to sit down. I drew my bow back or stand up. I mean, I drew my bow back sitting down and um, there was a big limb that he kind of went under and he was maybe at 10 yards. And as soon as I had a shot, right when he crossed underneath that limb, I just let it go. And at first I thought I might've hit his shoulder because I didn't have a pass through. Um, but I mean, he went 50 yards and died. So did you, did you see him go? 50, did you see him go awesome. down? We didn't see him go down. Um, it was it's very thick in there. There's like real tall weeds, and you know, Cody and I we thought he could have gone a long ways. We thought maybe he was like 100 yards away. We didn't know because without a pass through, you know, I was like, uh oh, if I if I only got a few inches of penetration and stuck a shoulder, it could take a long time for this deer to die. So. Yeah, it's crazy. After we found him, it, Cody and I are like, we're so stupid. Like, why didn't we see this deer go down? But he went down behind some real thick stuff. And, and I can't believe we didn't hear him crash because later in the night when we went to go find him, I couldn't even pick his head up. He had buried his tine so deep into the dirt. Kind of, kind of, it was kinda, crazy. Kind of go figure, right? He didn't hear you get into the stand. Well, you didn't hear him go down, so it was his payback. <laughs> Right. <laughs> he, he made you go right. out and get him at whatever time you ended up getting out there to recover him. And, uh, um, yeah. So what was the distance you, you let the shot go at? Uh, he was the, it was like 10 yards. Oh, he got that close. Yeah, huh? He was literally under me. Like I was at full draw. Like I couldn't, I was sitting down and I had my bow back and I couldn't go. Like if he would have taken another like two steps, I wouldn't have been, been able to make the shot. He would have been underneath my stand. Wow. Yeah, it was crazy. Did you I get... just cannot believe. I'm like, I'm wondering if this deer was deaf because, like, I don't know how he didn't hear us. Because, like I said, when he was 60 yards away, I was still climbing into the tree. Like, I, I don't, I don't know. Was was I have no idea. Was he trailing a doe? You think or anything or? Yeah, he was. Um, right after I shot, well, he was grunting, and then right after I shot him, two does popped out of the thicket, like right where he went down. Wow. Which, at the, at the time, we didn't know. But, yeah, I mean, maybe three or four minutes after I shot him, there were two does that popped out of the thicket. So I don't know if one was in heat or or what. I mean, it's kind of early for him to come in, but they're definitely pre-rutting. Um, so, yeah, it was just, it was crazy. I mean, I was in the stand at 542, and I shot the deer at 545. Like, a three-minute hunt. Like, I literally had less than three minutes to get my stuff together and make the shot. Wow, that's incredible. So, yeah, it was crazy. A three-minute hunt. You know, my turkey hunt last, not this past spring, but the spring before was the same way. I mean, Cody and I got in the woods. We didn't have the camera out, nothing. We literally sat down, and that's when I shot that turkey. Right. <laughs> so I don't know if it's luck or what, but you're that getting, buck definitely you're getting spoiled. up. Well, yeah, seriously. Now, the, the part I want to know is, why were you late getting to the woods? <laughs> well, Cody's parents were out of town, and we were babysitting his little brother, Ian, and I don't know. We we were getting all of our stuff together. And we weren't really organized. We were trying to get organized before we left, and we were honestly debating about whether we should go out because we were both tired, and, you know, and I was like, I've got to do this. I remember I just looked at Cody, and I was like, if I'm going to kill a deer, I'm not going to do it sitting at home being lazy. Like, I've we've got to go let's just go and it was kind of on a whim because we really were just de- we were debating whether to go or not so i'm so glad i was you know determined enough to go that night because who knows it might very well been the only shot of a buck i 
you know, I would have had all season if I would have kept hunting. So. Right. Yeah, that's why I always say you, you, you can't kill them from sitting on the couch. No, it's very hard. Yeah, that's right. You know, you, you got to put time that's in right. the stands and get out there and, and make the best of it. So, but okay, so you, yep. so you, you blaming it on and sitting there talking to side and I, I got to hear Cody's side of it because I have a feeling there's probably another side of this story. Yeah, let's, let's get Cody's side. Who, who is? Uh, yeah, Cody didn't care either way. He's like, whatever. He's like, it's your hunt. I'll be filming you. And I'm like, oh, I'm like, let's just go. And so we jumped in the truck and we went. And, and now you're going to have a deer on the wall. No, yes, I am. My first, my first one on the wall. I have my doe hide, but I do not have a head on the wall. You know what? What's so. I would love to have been like. Uh, a hidden camera sitting in a tree somewhere watching this all unfold and have that on video of watching her scramble him scramble try to to get ready as this deer comes <laughs> I in know. that would have been hilarious you can reenact it if you try I, I hear circus music in the background yeah exactly yeah. Yeah. Beep, 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 beep. you know it's it just that it, but look at that he didn't even you know this deer was so focused it sounds like on the does yeah he was oblivious yeah. to everything yeah 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 i mean it was literally a scramble. I mean, I was panicking when I, because I was, I wasn't even ready. I literally had just clipped in my safety harness, and I had, ju- I was, I was finicking with my release. I just buckled it, and I looked up and I saw him. I mean, wow. I was not ready in the slightest. <laughs> so it was literally like a panic attack. I was like, oh my <laughs> god, this might be my only opportunity to deer, and and it was just everything just fell into place. I don't know. You know, and, and crazy. She, and the good old PSE came through again for. Her. Yeah, that's two and that two in a row. That is absolutely right. Yeah, a doe, a doe last year and then buck this mm-hmm. year. Mm-hmm. I know? love that bell. And the and the black eagle outlaw she was using. Yes. Putting yes, them down. They were. All, I was so glad I didn't break or lose that arrow too. <laughs> I found it during recovery, covered in blood, so uh, it, it was good. Did he push it through or did it shake out? Did nope, he, he popped it back out. He popped it out. Okay. Probably it brushed went against in a tree or like, something. Uh, maybe twelve inches. Okay. Did then he popped it back out. I think I might have hit a rib just right to the, broken a rib or two and hit ribs on the other side just right that it didn't pass through because I mean I'm shooting sixty pounds and he was at ten yards and I right. didn't hit a shoulder. I it was a long shot, so why it didn't go through, I don't know, but right. the rage got the job done. So it's all that matters. It's all that matters. Yeah. Yep. Now, Cody, Cody uh, he was running camera. Did you go back and look at the video, and, and how did, uh, when did he pick up the deer? He picked up the deer, well, when I, you probably know this because we basically have the same camera, but when you mm-hmm. turn it on, sometimes it's like, you know, there's a, the screen's basically black, and it says, reading the memory card, and right. it takes a minute or two for it to, like, you know, boot up, and right. he was panicking because, he thought I was going to shoot the deer when he was at like 35 yards. Right. And um, the camera was still like booting up, but he couldn't tell me. He was trying to say, don't shoot, don't shoot. <laughs> I didn't even hear him because one, he's trying to be quiet. And two, I was so fixated on getting myself together. Um, but luckily the deer just kept walking towards me and he gave me a closer shot, which made more time for Cody to get the camera running. So he picked the deer up when he was right around the 30 yards. Okay. Um, right. When the camera came on, because like I said, he popped out at like 50, and then Cody started filming when he was about 30. Okay. So we have um, about two minutes of him on film. I say you, you couldn't have got more than three minutes. Got, we got no more than that because he's shooting. <laughs> That's yeah, good. I mean it was it was crazy. That's awesome. Another another Ohio buck story, and she got a doe last year, a buck this year. Yeah. You know. Well, now you 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 pulled out and you went back and you went back in later that night. I, I I saw the video you guys did from the field, but take me through. Actually, you know what? Let's take a break. And when I come back, I want I want you to take us through the recovery part of it. So uh, we're gonna step okay, outside. We'll, good. we'll take a break. And we'll be right back after this. I shoot PSE because I like one pin to forty yards. I shoot PSE for the perfect combination of feel and performance. I shoot PSE because you can shoot lighter poundage and increase arrow speed. I shoot PSE for the fastest bows on the planet. I shoot PSE because my livelihood depends on my bow. I shoot PSE because better engineering makes a better bow. I shoot PSE. 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 Experience PSE. Experience performance. 
We know the future of hunting depends on our nation's youth. But did you know that in many states, it's illegal for you to take your son or daughter hunting until the age of 12 or even older? As a result, we have fewer young hunters, and the Families of Field program is designed to eliminate those barriers. Hunting is safe, and the safest hunters of field are young people with adult mentors. Visit our website at familiesoffield.org to find out how you can bring more families afield. Welcome back. Second segment of the show. Sitting here talking about big bucks. Big bucks, Ohio style. So, Mara, we, right before we went to break, we talked about the fact that uh, you didn't go out and look for the deer until later that evening. Uh, when when you made that choice to walk away, what was going through your mind at that point? Um, anticipation of, I knew I was going to find that deer. I, there wasn't a doubt in my mind that that deer wasn't dead. Okay. Um, but just the anticipation of, of getting my hands on him and, you know, and taking in the full effect of the harvest, you know, it's not over till, you know, till you really find them because, you know, and it is, I mean, I guess I did, it did cross my mind because there's so many stories about people losing deer and you hear right. them every year, but I knew that shot was a solid shot. It w- weirded me out a little bit that I didn't have a pass through, but I'm like, you know, it was a solid, solid shot. I mean, I, I knew, even if I did clip a shoulder, I knew I got him in the lung, mm-hmm. if not both lungs. Um, so just, yeah, that really was just going through my mind. I was just excited to get back out of there. And, and I debated on even waiting till morning um, just for filming purposes because it's way easier to film a recovery, you know, during the daylight versus mm-hmm. artificial light. Um, what was the temperature I, like? It was pretty chilly uh when i shot him the temperature was like right around 50 degrees but by the time maybe a little cooler uh, maybe in the in the late or yeah late 40s i'd say Mm -hmm. but by the time we went back out it was like close to 30 degrees there was a big cold front that day and um as the day went on it got instead of getting warmer it actually got colder throughout the day so it was like i don't know 40 degrees when we found him okay um but yeah cody and i talked it over and you know, we went home and we watched the footage over and over and over again and slowed it down. And like I said, I really didn't have any doubt in my mind that that deer wasn't wasn't dead. I just didn't know how far he would have gone, okay. with, you know, without a pass through. Okay, so, so you, shoot, you shoot the deer at 545. You made the call uh-huh. to, to pull out. You're going to wait a little bit. How long did you wait? We didn't get back out there until like 10, 15 at night. Um Again, we would have liked to get out there a little earlier, but um, we actually met two of Cody's friends that, uh, actually his friend and his wife that wanted to come help us track and drag it oh, out. Oh, cool. Because here. Yeah, we met up with them because they, they live like on the way to this property, so that took a little bit of time, and like I said, we were babysitting Cody's little brother, Ian, and so by the time we got everything together and, and out there, we, we didn't get to the woods till like 10, 15. Um, and we made our way back to the stand and started from there because I left my arrow. Uh, when Cody and I got out of the stand to begin with, we put an arrow right where all the leaves were ruffled, where we knew he took off. Mm-hmm. And we were like, okay, well, this is where we need to start. Because obviously, especially that path, so you're not going to get blood for quite a few yards, you know. Right. Um, so we didn't even spend time looking for looking for blood when we got down because – we were like, if he's bedded right here and hasn't died yet, we don't want to jump him fooling around looking for blood. So we just got the heck out of there. And by the time we got back, um, you know, Cody and I, it was weird. Cody and I thought that the deer, because they typically take a very sharp turn before they die. And we thought we saw him turn real sharp to the left. Mm -hmm. Well, we were way off because um, Cody and his friend Luke were looking to the left. And then Luke's wife, Kayla, and I were looking to the right of, of, you know, maybe the 20-yard span width of the path he could have taken. And so, you know, it was kind of like girls against guys. Who's going to find the first blood? <laughs> and, um, and all of a sudden Luke goes, well, to the right over here, looks like, it looks like he tore up through here because all the leaves were pushed out of the way. And 
Kayla and I walked over there, we're looking, and sure enough, Kayla found first blood. Um, so I think the girls won that one. <laughs> it was kind of like a little, you know, rivalry, who's going to find it first. Um, and so we, after that first spot of blood that was like dime size, it was like blood, blood, blood everywhere. We weren't going like more than two or three yards without a lot of blood. Um, it, you know, quarter sized all the way to like, you know, it kind of looked like somebody just took it out of a cup and was just kind of sloshing it around. I mean, there was a lot of blood not having an exit wound. I could not believe the amount of blood that was coming out of that thing. Um, and maybe, you know, 20 or 30 yards of following the blood, uh, I saw my arrow and about 10 yards past my arrow, um, Cody, all of a sudden we were kind of stopped and we're, we're all excited. You know, my rage is deployed, my arrow's covered in blood. And I look at Cody and he looks at me and he goes, Mara, what color was that deer you shot? And I said, what? And he said, what color was that deer? I'm like, what are you talking about? It was I'm like, what? And he said, does it look like that one right there? And then he shined his light on his rack and I saw him just laying there. And I was like, oh my God, I could not believe that he had only gone that short of distance. I'm like, Cody, I'm like, we're so stupid. I said, how didn't we see him crash? I said, we could have gotten right down out of our stand and came over here and got him, you know, because he only went 50 yards. Right. I was like, this deer yeah. died almost instantly. I mean, he crashed and died. He right. didn't even bed. And like I said in the previous segment, he crashed so hard I couldn't pick his head up. His pines were buried. No kidding. He was dead on his feet. <laughs> so it was nuts. Was, was, the, was he as big as what you thought he was when you got up to him? His body was way bigger than I thought it was. Um, his rack, yeah, I would say. I mean, there's always, I think, a little bit of ground shrinkage. But, yeah, his left side is much bigger than his right side. Um, okay. His right side, he almost has like a little crab claw going on, whereas his left side, he has, you know, his complete G2 and G3 are, are real nice and tall. But, yeah, I mean, I couldn't be any happier, especially for a first buck. Most people who shoot first bucks are like spikes or, you know, four points or little little basket racks. I mean, right. he's just outside his ears. And Cody and I fooled around and gross scored him at like 115. I don't know what he'd actually score. Like I said, if that right side matched his left, he'd be at least 120. But I could not be any happier with that. I mean, seriously, that's, to me, that's a big deer. And I told Cody from here on out, like, I'm by no means a trophy hunter, but I don't think I'm going to shoot a, you know, a smaller buck. I, I think, I think that'd be something really cool to aim for. You know, I shot a 115 and then I'd like to get like every numeral, you know, and just work my way up like 120, 130, 140, you know, and get right. them all mounted on display. Right. I think that'd be a really cool, like lifetime, you know, goal to meet. Yeah, it, yeah, when I saw him laying there, I was I was in shock. I was like, are you serious? I just, the emotions and stuff that came over me was crazy. I've never felt that way. I, I was so much more excited than when I've, you know, shot does in the past, you know, especially last year. You know, that was my first bow kill last year, that doe. But I've shot, I shot does before with my shotgun. But taking a buck like that with my bow was seriously an experience, like, that I've never encountered before. Yeah, there's something about it. It's uh, it, it got to get you amped up. I think it's, that's what makes bow hunting bow hunting. It does. I really do. Yeah. I you think know. gun gun season. Yeah, it, it for some people that's the the major, but to us uh, that we bow hunt and gun hunt, come gun season, mm -hmm. we know it's like okay, we know where we're ninety five percent sure of. We see it within a hundred yards. It's, it's down. It's, it's toes. Yeah. You know, whereas bow hunting, it's like, like you said, Mara, uh, at 50 yards, he's coming in, but he's got to get a little bit closer because mm -hmm. he's coming straight mm -hmm. in. You know, he turns right, turns left, turns right around. Yeah, it's doesn't all over. Happen. It's all over. Yeah. You know? And uh, it, it puts it up close and personal and right in your face when, when, when you do hit the release. It's, I don't know, it's just, there's no words to really explain it unless you're the one doing it. And, uh, you know, for those who've experienced it, you know exactly what we're talking about. So, mm -hmm. um, absolutely. No, congratulations, man. When I seen the pictures, I was just, I was so happy. For <laughs> well, we, we got the text oh, that, you know, you. shot a buck. And I'm yeah. like, I'm in my tree stand going, uh oh. Well, see, I didn't see that until <laughs> I got back into camp that Oh, night. I was up in my tree stand and all of a sudden my phone vibrated and I pulled it out and looked at Mara and it says, I shot a buck. And I'm like, uh oh. Well, see, I'd put my phone away <laughs> for the night. You know, when I got about 5 30, I always try to put my phone away if I'm playing on the phone or something because it gets to be that serious time. 
of when you yeah. need to be really paying attention. So mm -hmm. I didn't check anything until, and I, I was back in camp, and I think it was like 8 o'clock or so before I even <laughs> noticed, I even checked my phone. So it took me a while. But then all of a sudden, you and I are texting back and forth, you know. And, uh, yeah, we were. So well, see, that's good. the difference is because when I go back to camp, that's when I lose it, lose my your service? My yeah, service. you guys are like opposites. Yeah, yeah, so I have to put it in the window and hope it comes through. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I can get it back out, right? So mm -hmm. I'm at my tree stand going, okay. And then mm -hmm. right, I'm done for the night. Because I texted her the next day and I said, well? Because <laughs> I don't know the story. You right, know? right. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing how technology has even changed the way we hunt. Uh, as far as being able to communicate with each other and have, you know, talk about success. And it, it's just crazy. It is. And, and, you know, and here we are, you know, we're, we're texting from Michigan to Ohio and, yeah, you yeah. know, and sending pictures and it's pretty cool. It is definitely. Yeah. And is. the Facebook live, I think that was a hit, the recovery. Yeah. When I, when I texted, I'm like, go live on the recovery. And, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I knew that, uh, that that would play pretty big because people, people that love watching that kind of stuff and seeing success. I mean, it's one thing to see a picture, but when you're sitting there and you're talking and you're explaining things, and right. you, you know, and you're twisting the head and holding it up and everything, it's just, it, it's, it's just so cool to be able to it's see It's live. Yeah, there's yeah. like a sense of realism, like you're actually there. You know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like you experienced it. So, absolutely. Now, that is awesome. That is. Uh, she's two for two. Right. So now, okay. Yeah, so and go ahead. I don't even know what I'm going to do with my time because Cody and I put in for paid vacation the second week from Cabela's, the second week in November so we could hunt the rut. <laughs> well, and I'm like, well. <laughs> well, now it's his turn. I you, guess I'm filming you, Cody. There you go. Yeah, I'm there you done. go. <laughs> you're, right you're done and ready to go. And, well, he yeah. just, he just yeah, gave I don't the camera know. I might person. maybe do some late season doe management, but I don't know. I'm pretty content. I don't know how much freezer space I have <laughs> after I get this big thing back. Right um, well, that deer weighed over 200 pounds. Wow. That, that yeah. was that was on the hoof after it was dressed? Yeah, you might as well start um, that. Uh, yeah, he was. I took him to the processor the, um, the next morning because it was like in the 30s that night. So he was basically refrigerated in the bed of Cody's truck. Um, took him to processing. Um, and they don't. Technically, at this place I use, they don't, they won't weigh deer. But mm -hmm. um, Luke, Cody's friend that helped drag the drag the, drag the deer out, said, "Oh, he goes, I'll get him weighed for you. Don't worry, I have a buddy who works there." So mm -hmm. Luke messaged his buddy and was like, "Hey, I got this girl that's bringing this deer in today. He's like, can you please weigh it for her?" And um, his friend that worked at the meat processing place didn't get the message until after he was caped and skinned. So when they cape them, you know, they cut them off like halfway at the neck. They leave right. quite a bit of neck on there. So his whole neck, head, skin, legs, everything was off. Just the meat and obviously field dress, just the meat. He weighed like 160. Dang. Dang. Yeah. That's a so horse. I'm like, you put everything else back in there. It's at least a 200-pound deer. Oh, yeah. Yep. And Cody and Luke both, when they were dragging him out, they looked at me and they were like, we have never shot deer this big. You know, this is like... the you know, the, one of the biggest bodied deer they've ever seen. And, and I think it was a very, very old deer. I'm not really good. At, I don't, I know you age them by their teeth and stuff, mm -hmm. but he was very gray in the face. I'm sure you could tell by the live video and the pictures, um, and such a big body and he stunk like his tarsal glands were, mm -hmm. whew, it was nasty. He really, really stunk. I mean, so he was, he was already rutten and I think he was past his prime antler wise. I mean, and he might have not have had that good of genetics, um, but other deer that Cody and his dad have taken out of that property in the past have um, usually their one side is bigger than the other antler wise. And I think I think it's a genetic thing because, you know, Cody and his dad both have taken deer that kind of look like that. But mm -hmm. It's the same form. Know. It's the same form. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, it's a genetic thing. You would think a one off yeah. is like a, 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 a hurt antler for the year, but mm -hmm. if it's. Right. consistent then you're talking genetics mm -hmm. right yeah i just think this deer was so old that he was past his prime he was probably way bigger like a year or two ago um at first like that you know judging just by the size of the rack when he was still on hoof before i shot him i was like ah, it's probably a three-year-old mm -hmm. but there's no way after we saw how big he was and how gray he was there's no way he was three he was really really old so he might taste a little nasty, but that's okay. <laughs> he's going to look good on the wall. He's going to look good on the wall. <laughs> yeah, and you know, right. I don't that's think right. he's going to taste that nasty because he's probably corn fed down there. Yeah, right on. 
Yeah, there. Yeah, there's cornfields all surrounding that property, right. and they just picked it like the week week ago. So. And it helps. Nice. Yeah. Absolutely. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, that's that's uh, one on the wall, one for Team UNJ. So uh, that's right. Now, now Cody's got a camera person to yeah t- for him, and uh, we got to mm-hmm. get back up north. We do. You know, I'll tell you what. Let's let's take our our second break here, and uh, we'll get more into some deer hunting that, that happened here this week. When we come back, we'll be right back after this. So, what do you do when you've completely redefined the way bows are engineered? When you've reached the pinnacle and the band starts playing your victory song, you start a revolution out of thin air. Introducing the all-new PSE Carbon Air, engineered with true carbon technology to be the lightest high-performance bow in the world. Experience PSE. Experience performance. We know the future of hunting depends on our nation's youth. But did you know that many states... It's illegal for you to take your son or daughter hunting until the age of 12 or even older. As a result, we have fewer young hunters, and the Families of Field program is designed to eliminate those barriers. Hunting is safe, and the safest hunters of field are young people with adult mentors. Visit our website at familiesoffield.org to find out how you can bring more families afield. Welcome back, segment three. What are you tearing up over there? My, my mic was drooping. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Sounds like a personal problem. It is. <laughs> it is. Um, I'm over here about half asleep. I need you a know, cup of coffee. You brought me coffee today. Thank I br- you. I brought you coffee today, and uh, you know, you spent the last week up north. I spent the last week up north. Mm-hmm. Ma was off killing deer. Yeah. Yeah. You know, go figure. You know, <laughs> we were chasing them, uh, but uh, since. I was the furthest north than anybody, mm-hmm. which actually the weather was was just about perfect. It was too warm. I, I thought it was warm well, for you because yeah. I was thirties and forties. Yeah, it was. It 50s was and sixties. I had it in the morning. It was clear, crisp. It was phenomenal. Did you get any rain? We got rain on uh, Wednesday. I think was the day. Wednesday and Thursday, we lost both days to hunt. Yeah, because it was pouring. We actually had snow on Wednesday night that coated the ground. It didn't last till morning. But uh, I was out there Wednesday morning, and I remember this. I was in the tree stand. We, we, we were, on average, getting out there an hour before daylight. It was clear. It was, it was spectacular. Cold, clear, and you could hear the deer Moving. roaming, roaming around. You can't see them. But here I am looking up at the stars, and... Uh, this was the first, it's been a couple of years now since uh, my dad passed away this year. Right. And my brother was able to go with me this year when we took some of my dad's ashes up there with us. And uh, I sat there and I, you know, you have one of those moments. Sure. And uh, it was wild. It was just like, I looked up in the sky, I saw these stars. Uh, I said, dad, you know, I hope you're looking down and, you know, here I am using your land that you provided for us and. It was awesome, and then the sun started to come up, and it was just spectacular. Everything so, was well. It was. It saw yeah. a lot of deer. Uh, my daughter was able to be up there for the weekend, and saw a lot of deer. I did not see any bucks except for a, a spike, and that was it. I mean, hey, we, it's better than nothing. We didn't have nothing on camera, and that scares me. But as we talked, we were the same way. And my week turned out pretty doggone good at the end of the week. I, I was on average seeing twenty deer a night. Wow. Or, or morning. See, and that was the opposite with us. We weren't seeing very many deer at all. I had, I had deer from the moment I sat down in the stand till it was. I'd go in at about eleven, and it would be like, all right, I got to move here, folks. Mm-hmm. So you're gonna move, and I'd just stand up, and they'd kind of look at me and I'm like, hey, we're eating. <laughs> yeah, they, they'd back off, and then they'd come back, and but um, yeah, I saw a ton of deer, ton of deer. Uh, I did leave a camera up when I was in July. I left a camera up behind the cabin, and I was able to get turkey and bear on that. Okay. Got a, a, 
a little skinny little bear it looks like but then again it was july so i'm thinking he was on his lightweight side yeah you need to feed boo boo uh boo boo <laughs> he's hungry <laughs> yeah well you know i ran into boo boo a couple years back uh and uh no that's the only time i'm gonna run into him i almost stepped on boo boo and that was not a good feeling what the heck is boo boo a bear <laughs> yogi and boo boo come on now i know you're young but you don't know who yogi and boo boo are <laughs> No. Oh my lord! Have we dated ourselves now, Danny? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you yeah. have just realized how old Mike and Dan are. <laughs> wow! Oh my gosh! So, oh. um, do me a favor: go to the Cartoon Network and and just watch it until you see the Yogi Berra show. Is your dad still in the room? No, he went oh. out. I think I might know what you guys are talking about, but I'm not like a hundred percent. They're sure. always stealing picnic like, baskets. Yeah. It, but I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah. But you know what? Uh, um, <laughs> if that makes you feel any better, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no. But it, it was a it was a great week. We saw lots of deer. We had fun. Um, I got to spend time with my 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 daughter, her girlfriend, and, and my brother. It's been years since my brother was able to get up there. That's awesome. It, it was a great week. Um, Deer-wise, uh, all the deer that I did see, they looked healthy. That's good. And it, by seeing that many deer and not being able to shoot does was just... Frustrating? Oh, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Get under your skin a little bit. Did you draw on any of them just to practice? No, because I probably would have let the arrow fly. <laughs> okay. Um, didn't I, sound like they were scared anyway. I could have been done in 15 minutes. Yeah. The first Saturday evening when I finally got up into the tree stand, sat down. Uh, I don't. Did I? I don't even think I had any my, my gloves on or my hat or anything. I think I was just sitting just mm-hmm. to relax. Yeah. And and find out what. And all of a sudden, here comes a deer. Wow. And I'm like, yeah, okay. And then at one point, I had three deer bedded down right by me, mm-hmm. just sitting there laying down. I'm like, okay, I can't move. But uh, yeah, if we could have shot those. And we, we could have shot a few because, like I said, on average in the morning, it was uh, anywhere from 10 to 20 deer. In the mm-hmm. evening, 10 to 20 deer. And it was, they were just rolling through. Gotcha. You know, it was, uh, I, one would leave off to the left. Some would come in from the right or come straight in or mm-hmm. come, in, come in from behind me. So uh, the deer, yep, like I said, uh, I only heard the wolves. I heard the wolves one morning as we were getting ready to go out. That's we, exciting. Uh, it is. And that is a, that is. That howl is just one of those things that just makes a hair in the back of your neck. Yes, stand up. I was, we were getting ready to fire up the four wheeler to go out and uh, stood on the porch, and all of a sudden you heard them. I was like, "Uh oh!" And speaking of that, my brother did see two wolves that they were they cruised the property. Uh, they were about seventy yards out. He set up on the ridge. No kidding. And uh, they were right behind each other, and they were going somewhere. You know, I don't know if they were. Going to breakfast. Going to breakfast, playing, or whatever they're doing. But they're chasing their nose to tail. And, mm-hmm. and it was, they came through the property, and he, he caught a glimpse of them, saw him. He saw him for about 10 to 15 seconds, came down the ridge, and then popped over the top. And way they went. Way they went. Mm. So Interesting. Yeah. And uh, it was, uh, and I said, uh, coyotes or wolves? He goes, no, they're, they're pretty big. Mm-hmm. And they were gray. One was light. He said one was a lighter gray. The other one was like a darker, almost black. So that's usually the. That's a wolf. Yeah, that's yeah, usually the guys. Yep. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, yeah. So you know, as far as the week went, I did a. I did able to. We 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 nailed down six mice. Okay. Yeah, we we had something for the buck pole. You ran a trap line, huh? We, we ran a trap line. <laughs> I, my daughter uh, uh. went up. 12 hours before us is about mm-hmm. the time span before I was able to get out of work and get, head up there. But they got up there first. And they, they inter- the first thing they ran across was a, a tree had come down across the trail. Mm, had to get a chainsaw out. Luckily, they didn't. They were able to pick up the tree and, and push it off to the side. And then they got into the cabin and uh, got everything all set, got the fire, got the electricity, water going. Uh, and then they, they set up the original trap line. So okay. they uh, then we came in about two o'clock in the morning and um, yeah from that it was game on with those little guys keeps you entertained oh it's hilarious you know you're laying there in bed and all of a sudden snap uh huh uh huh and so <laughs> I had one in my room uh, I was using the guest room because my dad and my uncle were up and 
I, I had some granola bar, or a breakfast bar sitting up on the uh, the dresser there. And I come in one night and I look and, and it's on the floor and it's half eaten and there's little shavings all around. I'm like, well, I mean, I got a dang mice in here. And then last <laughs> night or this morning at like about six o'clock, I, I knocked the alarm off and then it went off again at 6.15. And I said, oh, it's going to ring at 6.30. I'm just going to get up. And all of a sudden I could swear my leg was out from under the covers. I could swear something was on my knee. Oh. I, under the covers? No, I had my leg hanging out from under the covers. You know, out oh, heck no. And, and I could have swore I felt a, a mouse crawl across my knee. That happened to me. Oh, no. <laughs> that happened to me one time. I was in the one room on the top bunk, and I was laying there. And like you said, I had mm-hmm. my feet out, I think it was. And I swear something ran across my foot. Mm-hmm. Man. <laughs> you get up real quick, don't you? <laughs> Quickly, but carefully, because you yeah. don't have to get your head in the ceiling. But, uh, uh well, I yeah. Come, I come was, flying up. It was like... It's a, so, so... <laughs> Ma, you like mice? Uh, yeah, I don't mind them. Okay, because that was another thing was in the blind. Uh, oh, you get mice in the blind. Yeah, yeah I, I make it fun that I, I throw them some corn or, or some food and mm-hmm. and kind of feed them and they become pets. Right. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Sounds like you That's had hilarious. an interesting time. I would have paid to see you <laughs> jump out of bed, Mike. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I, I, come, I come flying out of bed and hit the light real quick. I'm like, all right, you little... You know what? Uh, I'm, game on. Uh, game on. But the thing is, I had to check every single piece of gear and bag that I had before I came home. <laughs> I went through it. You better be careful we don't chew your camera cords. Well, yeah, I, I, I went through everything and zipped it all back up and then stashed it and got it, you know, secured so that way I knew everything was good and got it in, into the vehicle. Nothing like coming down I-75 oh. and here comes Traveler Mouse with you. Yeah. Well, if I bring it in the house, man, Shannon will have a fit. Oh, yeah, so. You got dogs. It won't yeah. last long. No, oh, no. They wouldn't last long in here, i tell you that. But uh, Oh, that's, that's great. But, yeah, no, my week uh, was uh, eventful. Uh, we talked about this a little bit offline about the October lull. Mm-hmm. And if if that is a true statement, okay, I, I, I'll go with that because... I got something on that for you. Because we, because typically when 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 that happens, um, we'll usually catch a buck cruising at least off in the distance. Mm-hmm. We'll usually catch, oh, oh you know, hey, there's there, mm-hmm. all rack going through the woods. Yeah, didn't even catch that this time. Well, our our local uh, QDMA chapter up there, um, one of the guys who was on used to be on the board. He stopped over at camp Saturday. And first thing he said, he said, you've been hunting all week, or are you just up getting ready to start hunting? I said, no, I've been up all week. He go, and, and I stopped him before he even said, I said, I know, I hunted the wrong week. He goes, he said, I never pick up my bow until uh, Halloween. I won't even get into a tree stand. He says, typical October lull is this time of year, pre-rut. And what I didn't know, but he he's done a lot of research, or he's been to a lot of research facilities. He's also... Uh, been to places that's given him a lot of information on this. And he said that this time of the year, before the rut, before they get active, that their body started building testosterone. And that causes the bucks to become real jittery and anxious or, how do I want to say it, uh, they just get really skittish. So they'll typically lay around all day. And that's when you start seeing them on trail cams at night versus during the day. And that's what we were seeing. It was, okay. it, was, it was classic case, but we weren't seeing does either, which I, to the life of me, I don't understand why. But uh, he said that's the reason why. And he said once they they get into that rut stage, you know, they start going into rut. He says then they start getting up on their feet and they start cruising, burning that testosterone, chasing does. He said, but until that time, he says it actually makes their body is ache because they have so much testosterone in, really? in, in their system, yeah. He said they lay around a lot. And, and they're saving energy, too. Well, yeah, they know that what's coming up. Yeah. Like, okay. So, I'm so okay, I'll yeah, go with that. that's interesting. Yeah, so he said that, uh, he said, Halloween. Halloween, he picks up his bow, and that's when he starts, and not, not before. So, you know, and, and I knew that going in. Last year I had the same problem, and why I took the same week off, I have no idea. But it won't happen again next year. I can tell, I can tell you that right now. Well, Mara seemed not to have a problem. No, there's people killing deer. There's people killing deer, but he said, you know, you know, a, a lot of times your bucks will start going dormant, or you'll see them on camera at night, and and we we had evidence of that in the middle of the week. So that that's you know what we ran into at our camp. So yep, exactly. So, but uh, I tell you what, let's take our last break, and uh, I'll get a little more into kind of what happened up at our camp here in the last segment. There you go. We'll be right back after this. 
The 2015 Dream Season Decree is a deadly combination of speed and precision. It's built for the moments when time stands still. When the only thing that will break the silence is an arrow slicing a clean path to the kill zone. The bow of your dreams is a nightmare for big game. This is PSE's Decree. Experience PSE. Experience performance. We know the future of hunting depends on our nation's youth. But did you know that in many states, it's illegal for you to take your son or daughter hunting until the age of 12 or even older? As a result, we have fewer young hunters, and the Families of Field program is designed to eliminate those barriers. Hunting is safe, and the safest hunters of field are young people with adult mentors. Visit our website at familiesoffield.org to find out how you can bring more families afield. Last segment of the show, everybody. Still talking some deer hunting. We're talking deer hunting. You know what? We, everybody, uh, we tried to have a show last week. We did try. We tried. It, we, we we had a plan. And it almost worked. It almost worked. We except, lost our internet connection. Except we lost the internet connection. I was going to call you from the upper, and when you were in the upper lower, and we had it all worked out. It was going to work. The it, bad internet connection. Yeah, on my end. Yeah, there at camp it. For whatever reason, it, it tanked. And the next night, it actually, the Internet connection was up and running. I checked it real quick, and I thought, no, I'm not calling Danny. He's up north hunting. I'm hunting. We're just going to skip a week. So that's the reason that we weren't, uh, we didn't have a show this week. So we tried. We tried. But, uh, man, what a busy week. I, I, I put a lot of time in stand, hunted hard. You you even did something uh, totally unusual. We talked about, uh, you got to listen to the mini cast this week of... Uh, Thinking outside the box. Thinking outside the box, and you'll yeah. uh, get a little bit in depth as to what he did out of the box. Yeah, it's it, uh, you know when when you go into a hunt for nine days, and you've got these preconceived notions of what it's going to be like, how it's going to unfold, if you're going to get a chance. You know, I was up there Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. That's the first four days, and in them four days, I didn't have a deer under my stand at all. Never saw an antler on a deer. I was only seeing one deer, maybe two if I was lucky, per sit. And I got really discouraged um, real fast. Uh, it, it was just horrible. It, it's, it's the worst four days of hunting I've ever, I think I've ever had in my life. What, what, is, what, what is different about that? We talked about the law, but you weren't seeing does. No. The thing that, about the does, were, the, the strange thing is, is I was trying to switch it up. Um, and go out earlier and earlier and earlier because what I was noticing was every time I go out, there was does feeding in the fields. It didn't matter if I was out at, at four o'clock, three o'clock, two o'clock, one o'clock, and I kept backing it up. And so I think the does were feeding in the middle of the day, even though. Well, it kind of makes sense because the reason I picked last week is because the moon was going dark. Mm-hmm. They couldn't feed at night, and they couldn't feed, and it was it was working out perfect because. Mm-hmm. The first evening, Sunday morning, when there was, was there was there more of a moon, it was pretty bright. Mm-hmm. But as soon as that moon started to go away, by mm-hmm. by Thursday, Friday morning, it was pretty, pretty mm-hmm. dark out in the woods. Yeah, it was. You know, it, 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 when you get out the woods that early, you, you know, you spend a few hours. It, it, you know, unlike some other people where they go out and they spend like three minutes in the stand and shoot a buck. I, mean, I don't know who would do that. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, hey. It happens mm-hmm. though. I mean, it, you just slipped up. It was. I think it, it just. It was just luck. It was really pure luck. I didn't grunt. I didn't rattle. I didn't do a single thing. It was just luck. You messed up. But but you know what? You made your own luck by the fact that you got out. That's the key, right? You know, and, and right. We we've talked about this so many times. Well, it rained uh, Wednesday, Wednesday and Thursday, or Tuesday, Tuesday and Wednesday. It rained up there for two straight days. And. Uh, and I finally got out and hunted one evening after it quit raining. I got out a little late, pulled all my camera cards, and when I came back in, uh, actually, a little, that bone view device. For oh, your, yeah. I took that up there. Actually, I'll, I don't have it anymore. My dad confiscated it and took it home with him. Oh, nice. <laughs> so nice. I got to get another one. Oh. But, but this little thing is excellent for checking your trail cams with your cell phone. 
in the field because I, I normally have to take my laptop with me and pull the card, put it in, dump it, you know, clear the card, put it back in the camera and go to the next one. With this thing, I pull the card out, stick it in this bone view thing, hit the app, bang, I can look at every picture. And that's how I knew when I had the deer I've dubbed Night Train on camera. But, okay, you can view them, but can you do anything with the pictures on the card then? Yeah, I can download them to my phone. Okay, you can yep. download them to your phone. Yep. Okay, yep. okay. Yep, so I, I was checking, and that's how I actually found out when he came in, um, at, at what time, and that I had him, and how big he was, and, and it's like, okay, that was the first inkling of anything that I had. Man, my hunt's going to change. I finally got something I can target and go after and start putting a plan together. Yep. And, uh, you know, I hunted that stand for two days. Nothing. That same problem. Not seeing deer. You know, morning, evening, did not matter. Um, then I pulled cards again two days later, and I found him on a different camera in a different stand. And he was still having the same direction of travel. And I knew at that point I had verification of where he was coming from and where he was going. And at that point, when I started, I pulled all my camera cards and I did my investigation. And that's where we talked about on the mini cast about thinking outside the box. And in long story short, I, I swapped a stand in the middle of the day and started hunting in a different spot and set up on a new location. And uh, let's see, what's today? Today's Sunday. Last night I went out and I laid eyes on him. And I tell you what, it, it was it, last night was best hunt I've had in a long time, and I didn't pull pull the release or a trigger on nothing. You know, I got in stand. How far out was he? He came out, when he came out to the field, he was probably 80 to 100 yards away, but I could see him okay. clear as day. But I got in stand at about 3.30 that afternoon, and I'm sitting playing on my phone. And my buddy's back at, uh, that came up, he's back at, at camp. He's like, you seen anything? I'm like, yeah, I'm watching squirrels. <laughs> oh, there's a button buck. You know, and I'm like, I looked at my phone, it's 5.40, and I'm like, I got to go. It's getting, it's getting prime time. Put my phone away, and... Uh, I stood up and stretched, and I looked to my left. Here comes a doe, or here comes a deer, you know, a single right. deer. And I'm like, oh, here we go. And I, I, all I could see was a body. And I'm like, I bet that's a buck, you know, coming in by itself, because typically single deer are bucks, because the does are a lot more social creature. So I got up, got ready. It comes in. It's probably a two-and-a-half-year-old doe. And I was just like, oh, man, how dare you <laughs> get my blood boiling like that, you know, <laughs> all that. But but she she winded something. And I don't know if it, she picked up my scent on the ground from when I walked in or if it was something else. Danny and I talked about this before the show tonight. Um, when I got in stand, I started to put my gloves and my hat on and I smelled something. And it was I described it as a funk. It wasn't like human body odor funk. It was just something funky smelling took my hat off smelled it it wasn't my hat then i start smelling my gloves i start smelling my jacket i stick my nose down inside my jacket see if it's me you know you know it's kind of like a guy going to prom you know checking his armpits and everything yeah exactly <laughs> making sure that i'm good for the ladies but uh and i put my hat back on and i smelled it again and i took it off and i smelled the hat again i'm like no it's not that and I put it back on okay just something in the air and I kept smelling it periodically through the evening at different times when the wind was blowing just right. So I think there was something decaying in the woods around me. And I don't know if that's what she picked up on. And, and you, like you said, it wasn't a, a dead smell. It wasn't a dead it, animal it, smell. It was a, a fungus smell. Yeah, like a fungus or, a, you know, like just funk. So she's staring up at me like, I see something there. I don't know what you are. And she starts licking her nose, sticking her head up in the air, trying to catch wind of me. And I'm rock solid. But when I seen her come in, I hit the recorder on my camera. And I, she had me locked down for 15 minutes. And my, Holy cow. My, my legs are starting to quiver. And uh, she kind of got spooky at one point and jumped around away from me at about 40 yards. But she was still locked on to me. And all of a sudden, she turned to the field. And the little button buck, he's feeding through the field. He threw his head up. And when they both threw their heads up and looked, I sat down. I was like, whew got a break <laughs> you know and then I, I looked over and all of a sudden here comes this i was like i can say it's a majestic buck he walks into the field like here i am who wants a piece of me bring it and i was like oh my god that's that's night train and it, it it just it got me for a minute you know i'm just sitting there taking it all in and she's looking at me she's looking at the buck 
the little buck's looking at the buck and he's taking a bite of, of the rye and he's looking at the buck like, please don't hit me. Please don't hurt me. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and he walks out and he just stands there and he starts feeding. And I'm like, oh, my God, this thing's incredible. And King of the woods. He was, yeah. I mean, it's just like Bambi's dad. You That's know? right. And I'm in awe of this buck. And I'm watching him for about 20 minutes. And he feeds down towards the end of the, the, the field. And he walks out, out of my view. And then the doe, in the meantime, he walked back over. And when she was pawing through acorns around the tree, because I was, I was sitting in an oak tree. And I'm like, oh, I ought to shoot you. And I, and I started to draw back. And I thought, no. I can't because if I smack her, cause commotion, what if he's still just mm-hmm. outside of my view? It's, you know, a hundred yards down the field here and I, nothing I can do right at that point. He might be out of there for a while. Yeah. So I like, no, I let her walk. And, but I tell you what, it was just, I dubbed him night train cause I got him on camera twice at two different times at night in two different locations. And, uh, I figure, you know, he's as big as a freight train and he comes through at night. So All right. Are you going to have a chance to get back up there with a bow? Probably not. Okay, so probably not. Next, next rendezvous with Night Train will be with a gun. Yes, and if I'd had a rifle with me, he'd be he'd be in the freezer right now. There you go. It goes right back to that. You know, the the difference between bow and gun. Yeah. You know. Yeah. It, it, up close so, and personal. That's why it is. That's yeah. why it means so much when you take a deer with a bow. You know. Yeah, the um, challenge is incredible. Now, the best part of this story. I've been looking at, at trail cam photos, and I'm not 100% sure, but I think he's the deer I let walk last year. Right. We were looking at him before we went yeah. on the air, and uh, I think you might be right. You know, I let him walk as a two-and-a-half-year-old, and and, uh, and, I, and my buddy that came over Saturday uh, to camp, the Q, uh, our QDM uh, former board member, he looked at the, the trail cam photo from last year. He looked at the one that I had from this year. He's like, he said, yep. He said, he, that one's two and a half year old. And he said, and this one's, he said, he's definitely a three and a half. There's no doubt about it. Um, he, he's just, he's huge. His muscular structure, he's just so huge. Uh, and then you look at the antler structure and he's like, yeah, he said, that, that, that could be the same buck. He said, it might be the same buck. Very well. It could be. So it's good to know that. I mean, that's it, what it takes to grow big ones, though. Management and, you know, picking and choosing which ones you take. Yeah. Well, you know, and last year, I mean, Kevin Hutchins was sitting in the blind with me. And he's like, you're going to let that buck walk. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to let that buck walk. We watched that deer at 80 yards, and he walked by me broadside at about 25 yards. And I could have smoked him. And mm-hmm. uh, I'm like, and we're in a pop-up blind on the ground. And he, he, he just about come on rally. He's like, I can't believe you're going to let that walk. And I'm like, well... I got a, a four and a half, five and a half year old ten point that I'm hunting here on the property. I know he's here. Yep. You know, and that's why I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna let this guy walk because I'm after something bigger. And yep. and you let him. I said, just think what he's gonna be next year if he makes it, and nobody pulls the trigger on him. And that and that's the thing. In when you're in the right spot and you know you've got deer on camera and you know, like Mara, the deer you had was on camera, right? We thought it was, um, and it actually was not. It oh. was a different deer. Okay, you know. Yeah, so there's but, some other big bucks roaming around over oh, there in okay. that same spot. That that plays right into it. If you know you've got multiple bucks that you can hunt, and you select the one, mm-hmm. letting those others go is a lot simpler. Yeah. If you it know is. you've got other bucks in the area, mm-hmm. when you're catching that one buck and that's it, mm-hmm. yeah, die that one buck is the guy. Right. Right. You know. Well, but and that's why we started the deer co-op up at our place. You know, the surrounding landowners. um, You know, we're slowly working through this, but we've got a few landowners of like mindset. And you know, and and I talked about this on Facebook. I posted the picture from last year, the buck that I let walk. I put that picture out there, and you know, and later on, I'll, I'll I'll put the other picture up to compare. And it's just once you see that comparison, it's like this is why we do what we do. This is why this is why we, we we limit our travel on the property. This is the reason we use scent control on the property. This is the reason we use multiple sets and, and start putting trail cameras up in May and looking at deer and figuring out where to put our, our, our sets. Yep. You know, I have put so much work into my hunt this year. And did I put them on the wall? No, not yet. And I may not. But you know what? Last night, it was all worth it because it, it proved everything that I've done so far has been right. Yep, exactly. You know, it's, it's led to this, this result. 
do we always get a pull trigger? No, we don't. But you know what? It, it's, it's never about that. It's about the experience. Absolutely. You know, and, and how you do things and doing things the right way and, you know, sneaking in, you know, riding the bike in this year. Dude, I, that went so well for me. It, I can't explain how much fun I had riding a bike through the woods, number one. The look on Doe's face when I passed by a, a field and they would look at me like, what are you and where are you going, <laughs> you know? But And needless to say, the video of him that he took riding one-handed <laughs> it was it was good video except when the sand when the sand got really soft <laughs> kind of got a little wobbly on the bike yeah with one hand but yeah, uh, yeah. but no that it all... works so well exactly you know, traveling back and forth quiet and effortless effortlessly um you know i'll put a, a bow mount on my handlebars that worked great um my backpack which you know i've kind of went to the backpack mode here for the last five or six years, taking my scent lock clothes, putting them in the backpack. I actually wrote out the first day in my base layers. So if you want to see a site, that was probably... No, no, that's okay. <laughs> that's probably a site to behold. But you're right. The whole week, I, I walked out holding, carrying my jacket. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it was like... You go out, that way you're not sweaty. Yeah. You layer up, get in the stand. You know, there's no car exhaust. There's no car noise. There's no door slamming. You know, and and you can and get out the same way. Yep. I rode down coming out last night down the two track, and I'm not pedaling. I'm kind of coasting down a little incline, and all you can hear is the leaves rustling as I'm riding over them. And about 40 yards in the in this one spot where there's some thick, I'd say brush, not a thicket, but some brush. I heard a deer jump up and then stand. You know, he took one step and stopped because I was already past him. Right, and by the time he heard me, I was already gone. He he, he had, didn't even have a chance to react. Yeah, all he heard was leaves rustling. Yep. So <laughs> it's you're just zipping through there. Yeah, it, it it it's worked better than I could have ever imagined. You know, it, it really has. It's worked really well, and uh, you know, I, I wish I could carry this into rifle season, but my daughter's going to be with me or one of my boys. It's going to be kind of hard to piggyback them on me and pedal at the same time. We can always get you one of those kitty trailers. No, I'm not. I told you I'm not getting no trailer for my bike. You need like a sidecar. Oh, a sidecar. There we go. <laughs> no. put, put little goggles on them. They can get their own bike. Yeah. Anyway. Heck yeah. <laughs> but uh, that's awesome. So yeah. stay tuned because this story might not be over yet. No. And, you know, and it might take a year. Yep. You know, to come to, to a conclusion. You know, I don't know. But uh, it's just. It's really nice to put all the work and effort. Mara, you know, I mean, you put sets up, you put trail cameras up to it, and, and you practice scent control. And it's once once you put all these keys and pieces of the puzzle together, and you're starting to see the picture, and it opens mm-hmm. before you. It's just, I, I wish we could get everybody to kind of understand the philosophy of how, why we do what we do and how we do it, and to see the results, you know. Yeah, I mean, at school, that's, you know, with a communications degree, that's what they teach us. The change is the hardest thing to, you know, to make an audience or, or anyone, you know, do. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if it's not broke, why fix it? And so many people are just, you know, so blind to that. It's astonishing, really. Well, y- y- tradition's hard to break, number one. Right. And and if you've never experienced success on that level of seeing a majestic deer, quite honestly, I've only seen one. There's only been two other times I've been hunting and I've seen bucks as big or bigger. One was in Illinois at Clint Turner's place. When, yep. he, when he took me down there, I seen the biggest deer I've ever seen in my life. And I had to change my shorts. And <laughs> I, I was hunting uh, at our old, old camp in the middle of, of the lower peninsula. This cheese was probably 10. Now, nah, no, this was over 20 years ago. I mean, it, it was a long time ago. And it was the day before season. I just went and set out in a blind just to sit out there and see what I could see. And I watched a mainframe 10-point walk through, and he was probably about a 150 or 160 class buck chasing a wow. dog. And I was just, m- my jaw hit hit the ground. I was just like, oh, my gosh. You know, it was just, and he walked by me at 30 yards. Yep. With his nose right up her tail end chasing her. That's it. I mean, it, and, and like you said, Mara, change is a hard thing for some people. It is. But, you it know, is. if we can do it, you know, um, I think we just have to lead by example. and, and Can show. we lead by example for the DNR to get... Mandatory deer check. Strangely enough, there may be a there may be a little story somewhere down the road on that. Um, um, long story short, I'm talking, and that's all I can say right now. I'm, I'm talking with a couple people, 
So because uh, after this past week of, of sitting there <laughs> watching the deer parade go by and I can't do nothing, right? It's just right. It's 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 mind blowing. Yes. Yeah, but uh, you know, that, and that's I, I, Mara. I talked to Danny here before the show, and you know, after what I've experienced this week, um, you know. I question some of the things I I do and why I do them and why do we do what we do. And this is why, I mean, we want to educate people. We want to, we want to teach people that that hunting's cool, that, that it's, you know, it's good food to put on your table. There's ethical ways of doing it and there's unethical ways of doing it. And that's what we want to show people, you know, the ethical way so they can, they can be proud of what they do and that there's a, there's a right way, you know, and that, that, you know, letting these deer get older is not just because we want to put horns on the wall. It, right. It's better for the herd. You know, I sat and talked with our QDM director or board, former board member this weekend for two hours about the, this very subject. And it's getting the knowledge out there about the science behind why we do what we do and why it's better for the deer herd. Exactly. So, um, you know, just we got to get people to lay off the trigger a little bit. And there's nothing wrong with people shooting what they want to shoot. I'm not trying to tell people. But I'm just saying there's a better way. There's a better way. Better way through education. Exactly. So, and that's, I think that's kind of my mantra, you know. It's always been our mantra, education. I think so. I think so, you know. But uh, Night Train's going to haunt me, man. Yeah, sounds like it. I can hear that whistle blowing. (laughs) Yes, you can. (laughs) Oh, man, what a week. What a week. I hear you. What a week for Mara. Oh, man. Mara's had a great week. We had a great week. You had a week uh, paying honor to your dad. Oh, you know that was what a legacy he left you up there yeah it was uh that's great man it was it was something and uh you know uh, we took a little bit, bit of his ashes and we sprinkled them into the into the trout creek up there and uh, nice kind of let them flow through the property and very nice it was uh appropriate yeah it was we figured that was i, I came up with that idea cuz that way he gets spread out through the property well and he'll always be there he will be you know so very cool it is well, Mara, when you get that uh, that monster back and you get ready to put him on the wall, you got you got to take a picture of him hanging on the wall and show everybody. Oh, I definitely will. Next time, I'll take a picture away from Cody's buck. <laughs> yeah, what was up with that? I think he was trying to show you up. You know, you, you get one, you take it right into the taxidermist, and what does Cody do? He breaks his out of the freezer from last year. A year later, yeah, right. <laughs> uh, and we'll take this one here and get it. Well, I'm gonna go in now. <laughs> I was like, wow. <laughs> well, our taxidermist is a really, really good one, and he's a little bit of a drive. So yeah. not not so much of a drive that he should have waited a year. But, uh, right, right, right. <laughs> but I don't know. I think it was a good excuse for him to take his in, you know, when I got mine. Oh, so. he, yeah. He, he, you put the pressure on him is what you did. Yeah, but now I'm like, okay, if you shoot a buck this year, I'm like, then what are you gonna do? Right, right. Yeah, you <laughs> shoot one broke, better. You know? Yeah, definitely. Not cheap. He'll be a year behind on his mounts. Right, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, anything else you guys want to throw in for the show? Good luck to all the hunters out there, and you know, practice their proper scent control and yep. and everything else, and be safe. Shoot straight. You know what? And 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 you're everybody's gonna listen to the show tomorrow, and it's Halloween. Boo. Boo, yeah, spooky. <laughs> boo, boo, <laughs> boo, boo, yeah. <laughs> Go find out who Boo, boo is there, Mara, and let us know what you think. <laughs> All right, is that my homework for the night? That's your homework. Yep. Well, Let's ask your dad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, folks, that'll do it for us this week. This episode was brought to you by PSE Archery, Black Eagle Arrows, Cabela's, Antler Action, Spot Shooter Archery, Tom's Custom Turkey Calls, Family Traditions Tree Stands, and Badass Slingshots. Thanks for listening, and join us again here next week. Until then, remember, as we always like to say, if you're out on the water or in the woods, shoot straight and be safe until next week on the Up North Journal.